Hello and thank you so much for stopping by my poster. I am Dr. Arjun Ray. I am a final year postdoctoral trainee in the Department of Nephrology in IPG in Kolkata. Today, I would like to share my poster regarding spectrum of complement factor rich related gene disorders in various nephrological diseases. Coming to a hospital between Jan 20 to February 21, comprising of all the adult and paid patients suffering from thrombotic microangiopathy. Also, in complement mediated MPGN cases like C3GN and dense deposit diseases, we also took the patients with renal biased evidence of TME. We have sent the gene panel for different pathologic variations of complement factor rich like FH or 1, 3, and 5, this specially. And also, we have sent the anti FH antibody titan selected few. Total 15 patients were there, and seven of them were treated. Two patients had to be excluded due to evidence of DIC. NGS came out to be negative in three of them. Among the positive patients, the female estimate preponderance of 1.5 is to 1, the median age group of 6.5 years. Among the positive cases, five were suffering from atypical NGS. Among them, two had significant anti CFH titers, and one of them died eventually. Among the remaining cases, two are suffering from pregnancy-related acute kidney injury, one from immune complement NPGN. Immunological parameters came out to be negative for her, one from acute glomerulonephritis, the one child was suffering from child and also nephrotic syndrome. For the remaining cases, there was no requirement of RRT in the long term. But we found out that the homozygous deletion of CFH one and three was found out in five of the 10 positive cases, followed by duplication of the same in two of them. One atypical age was patient was suffering from base per insertion at CD46. The PAKI patient with TMA and renal biasity had a mutation of Adam 3S13 gene. The CONS patient was suffering from mutation of CFH5. The anti CFH antibody titer was positive in two of our paid patients. So, in concluding, the highlight was deletion of CFH1 and 3 followed by duplication of the same. All atypical HUS patient and the one PAKI patient received plasma phylosis. And in the patients with high anti CFH titers, they received cyclophosphamide as the immunosuppressant therapy, and the patient who survived, received MMF as the maintenance. So what I'd like to conclude is that in resource resistant area like ours, where inclusive is not available, they are prompt initiation of PLEX followed by immunosuppressive therapy can result in a better renal outcome. 83.3% of our cohort didn't require long-term hemodialysis and had near normal renal function. So this therapy was aimed to stop further antibody production, so can be monitored by the anti-CFH antibody measurement by animal. For the patients, particularly awaiting transplant, we can also predict the recurrence and plan our management accordingly. Thank you so much.